How much we're talking to? It's quarter to nine. For people living with severe sight loss, just getting out and about can be a daily challenge. Now, though, researchers from Oxford University say they've made a breakthrough after designing some special smart glasses. They work by enhancing the images of people and objects nearby and then projecting them onto the lenses. We'll have a look at the moment, but our health correspondent Adam Brimelow explains more. Directly in front of you, we have a chart with letters. Lynn Oliver has a progressive eye disease, which means she has very limited vision. Illuminated chart. No, I can find the chart, but I can't see anything on it. Her guide dog, Jess, helps her find her way around, avoiding most obstacles and hazards. Can you see anything now? But she can't convey other information about her surroundings. I could tell there's something on it, but I can't see anything to tell me what letters they are. It's thought in the UK there are nearly two million people with a sight problem which seriously affects their daily lives. Most, though, have at least some residual sight. Yeah, it looks cool to me, yeah. but people will want something that's... Really Researchers at Oxford University have developed a way to enhance this using smart glasses. They're fitted with a specially adapted 3D camera. The images are processed and projected onto the lenses, so people and objects nearby become bright and clearly defined. If you're walking around, you're able to navigate doorways, see hazards on the floor that might, that might trip you up, so you can become more independent. People have commented how they've seen their guide dog for the first time, um, or seen their limbs or things around them. This is a real test. There are so many potential obstacles in this market different shapes and sizes coming at you from different heights and angles. So can the glasses make this a safe place to navigate? Just like cool sunglasses, aren't they? This new prototype provides the clearest images yet. <laughs> You've been spotted. Good girl, forward. Soon the surroundings are coming into focus. Oh, there they are. Lovely. Even since we've been down this corridor, it's improved. I can see you. So I'm just standing here talking and not thinking. I'm looking forward. The researchers are confident in time they can be made the size of normal glasses. Eventually, they say they could be available for the cost of a mobile phone, saving the NHS millions by preventing falls. The RNIB says they could provide a massive step in improving independence. Oh, you've gone. Adam Brimelow, BBC News, Oxford. You're not there anymore. <laughs> you disappeared. Oh, and Lynn is here with us now. Morning to you again. And Dr. Stephen Hicks as well. And Jess as Good well. Good morning. Good morning, Jess. Lying morning. down there very, very obediently. Um, Lynn, you, you looked quite emotional and sounded quite emotional when the glasses were taken off. Tell us what it was like being able to see through them. Um, well, I just got used. It, it's the first time I'd worn that pair. And uh, having walked around, and seeing people around me, like Stephen, seeing Stephen here, I'd even see you, mm. the presenters and anyone else standing. And when they were lifted off from Stephen right in front, um, not Stephen, it was yeah, Adam, Adam, Adam yeah. lifted them off. And where he had been there, there was suddenly a big blank oh. space of twinkling lights. Mm. Tell us when you first, because you saw Jess as well, presumably, yes, for the first yes, time. What was that down, like? Well, normally, if I can catch her, I'd just get an eye. Oh. <laughs> and then perhaps a little bit of it. But she was uh, looking at her full with an outline mm. around her so I could see her. It'd be lovely to be able to, you know, know when she's on the carpet yeah. or out in the garden yeah. and find uh, her. I mean, Stephen, life-changing doesn't really go start, begin to describe this. I mean, it's revolutionary for people who, have, uh, who are sight-impeded, isn't it? Yeah, well, I think it's a, it's a nice technology that will be able to give people a lot more independence and quality of life. But you do miss out on a lot of interactions when, when your vision fails, so this kind of gives you a chance to be much more natural and walk around yeah, with yeah. freedom. Well, I'm just going to put these on. I should confess, I've, I have broken them. I know. I uh, <laughs> confess <laughs> because I broke the clip. But there you could see uh, clearly the, the outline of you two on the sofa, and there you are. Uh, waving. So, it, it, Lynn, this, um, yes, for one, it makes life a lot safer for you, doesn't it? Absolutely. Walking down the street, I last year with with six months of without a dog, I was walking using a long cane, <laughs> and uh, walking into well, finding cars with my long cane, mm. and there would be people sitting on the pavement on the in the cars on the pavement, and then they'd swear at me because I touched their precious car. 
I'd either have to try and squeeze on the inside, but the glasses would have stopped me coming into the car. I'd have known if I'd had to have gone on the inside or out into the road. Mm. Um, again, I was walking along, trying to find a drop curb to cross with, and uh, a car pulled right up in front of me. Which is terrifying, actually. It um, is. It's, it's really scary when it keeps happening, and you really have to uh, bite your fingernails and do I go out or mm. do I stay in and get depressed? Oh, Stephen Hicks, um, so who would be able to use these, do you think, in the future? Who are they suitable for? Obviously, Ooh. Lynn is one, number yeah, one yeah, on the no, list. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> uh, so there are, there are 300,000 or so people who are registered blind, and that's, yes. a, that's a level of sight which is too low to do normal sight-based tasks. And we really looked at that entire group to see how many people we could approach. And we started off with a very crude prototype that was really only good for people who've got basic perception of light only. Mm. But as we started to explore the idea more, we realised that a lot of people who are registered blind have actually quite a great deal of sight. So that directed our project into something more like these smart glasses that showed higher detailed edges and faces and, and start to look at some of the real life changing parts. And this prototype, the one that you brought in here that I was just wearing, is quite... Yeah. I mean, it's not uncomfortably heavy, but it's a bit like wearing it's, a it's crown. It's a niche product, yeah. you know, having something like that. soon, within, what, for how long, people will be able to wear these instead? Yeah, so these have just come onto the market. It's basically a, a smaller version of the display that we're using in, in this original set. And they're, um, they're a much more affordable. They run on a, a small processor. They're you know, approaching something which you wouldn't mind wearing out you know, outside. So we, it was, Adam mentioned the price of a mobile phone, a few hundred pounds. Is what yeah, it would be. I mean, we, we buy the, the basic unit of this for a couple of hundred pounds. So we can uh, we could start thinking about having people sub uh, subsidise the cost and getting it out there for a, a very, very and For what it would price. bring you, Lynn, it'd be well worth it, wouldn't it? And a lot of my friends who've got a little bit of sight and especially people who were losing their sight, older people who lose their confidence mm. very, very quickly. Um, it just helps them, you know, no more trees walking into, no more A boards, mm. and, and hopefully also, no um, more dropping off of curbs. Yes, mm. there's also nuances as well, because I noticed when you put them on, you can see, you can begin to see people's expressions as yes. well, can't you? Mm. Yes. Mm. Oh, it's been well, lovely to talk to you. Yeah, fun, am amazing. Work there, yeah. Stephen. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Lynn, Me thanks either. for trying them out for us. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. <laughs> now, let's get a last look at the weather. Here's Carol. Good morning. Thank you, Billy. Good morning. This morning, it's a fine start to the day for some of us. Some of us are already seeing some sunny spells. And as we go through the day, some more will develop. But equally, there are going to be some heavy showers around, and some of those could prove to be thundery in nature across parts of Scotland and northern England. So on the satellite, you can see where we've got the sunshine already, but we also have the cloud across northern Scotland.